Our next guest is considered one of the world's greatest thinkers. Malcolm Gladwell has written five New York Times bestsellers, co-founded two podcasts, and with his social commentaries, continues to turn upside down and inside out just about anyone's previous mindset. Here to fill us in on his latest project is journalist, author, and speaker, Malcolm Gladwell. Welcome back to your morning. Thank you. Glad to be on the show. I love this idea of tackling morality and technology and what happens when they collide. The bomber mafia, a dream, a temptation, and the longest night of the Second World War. You say this isn't really a war story, although it mostly takes place in wartime, and you cover pivotal moments in history through the eyes and the minds of real-life characters, who you present as more complex. You know, often in history, we sort of give people one-sided view of people, but you take a look into the complexities of their personalities. Uh, who, first of all, were the Bomber Mafia? The Bomber Mafia are a group of uh, pilots in central Alabama in the 1930s who wanted to reinvent war, who thought there was a, a better way to fight wars that wouldn't leave hundreds of thousands of people dead on battlefields. And they thought they could do that by um, dropping bombs with perfect accuracy. And they take that dream into the Second World War. And my book is all about what happens when people who are in the grip of this kind of um, obsession, it really was an obsession, what happens when, an, when a technological dream meets reality? That's the story of the book. The war heats up. There is this intense pressure on this pack of dreamers to show some results specifically to prove that what was happening before this mass bombing was not the way to win the war. And this is when we meet Haywood Hansel, a sort of tragic character in that he never wavered, but he just couldn't quite hit the mark. What did you discover? Haywood Hansel is one of those incredible characters. He's like some he's like something out of a novel. He was this dreamy, romantic, brilliant, you know, poetry writing uh, pilot who he would sing show tunes to his men when he was flying them back from bombing missions over Europe. Hmm. And he was the spiritual leader of the bomber mafia, the one who was most kind of uh, in love with this idea that um, this small group of pilots could fight wars where only a fraction of the, uh, of, uh, with a fraction of the casualties of normal war. They really thought they were on a moral mission. And he carries that dream into the Second World War, and it doesn't work, and it doesn't work, and he doesn't work, and he doesn't give up. And so Haywood Hansel, his his favorite book was Don Quixote. He really is the knight in Don Quixote, you know, who tilts the windmills. He's just this, and he meets this kind of, well, the book ends, I won't give it away, but he has this kind of climactic showdown in Guam in 1945 with his great antagonist, Curtis LeMay. And it... Uh, the result of that showdown is is one of the one of the darkest nights in the history of warfare. Yeah, what I love about this idea is you you take you take them out of just being generals in this war scenario, and you you pitch them as a creative versus a pragmatist. And because we are in the theater of war, the pragmatist ultimately, in a way, wins out. What did Lemay do that Hansel could not? Curtis LeMay was the opposite of, of Haywood Hansel. He was uh, this kind of ruthless, cold-blooded, unsentimental. Uh, he was the, you say, he was a he was a realist realist. He had no time for technological dreams. He had no time for grand strategies. He thought that you should fight a war as brutally and as efficiently and as quickly as possible. And so he looks at what the Bomber Mafia are doing, and he thinks what they're doing is absurd, more than absurd, is is foolish to the ninth degree. And the, he uh, he directs the opposite idea in bombing, which is he thinks you should bomb as much as you can of the enemy as quickly as possible. And he's the first Air Force general to use napalm. Um, and he uses napalm on a scale that is unimaginable. Um, and it's uh, that's where the book ends, with uh, Curtis LeMay directing, after the sort of defeat of Haywood Hansel, Curtis the Mate takes over, and uh, the last six months of the of the Second World War in the Pacific Theater against Japan is one of the most mind-numbingly brutal stretches of war in human history. You know, we've seen the video footage or we've watched the movies, but you know, yet again, Malcolm Gladwell, you have made us take a look at something that we thought we knew, 
flip it inside out and look at it in a different way. Thanks so much for joining us this morning. My pleasure, Marie. A reminder to you at home, the Bomber Mafia, A Dream, A Temptation, and The Longest Night of the Second World War, audio experience and book. This is the first time Malcolm Gladwell has done this together at the same time. Is now out. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.